In November 2005, the State Department said the U.S. was ready to lift military restrictions on Indonesia and resume, quote, selected areas of military assistance. Bottom line, more U.S. military troops in the country doing military training and more humanitarian operations. This humanitarian project is the first military-to-military -military project since the ban on such relations some seven years ago. Army Civil Affairs soldiers and Navy Seabees are working with the Indonesian military, rebuilding this school, which was devastated by last year's earthquake, as well as the rebuilding of another school and two bridges in the area. As the U.S. military for this project, we're facilitating um, bringing in equipment and material to get the job done, assisting with the technical aspects of the blueprints, uh, reading it, and making sure that the concrete and things go up uh, in accordance with the standards, and also just being here in a partnership working mill-to-mill -mill for the first time uh, since the ban, a previous ban on mill-to-mill -mill relations with Indonesia. The Pacific Command has supplied the $1.3 million to front the supplies for the four projects. Paul Berg, the principal officer at the American Consulate in Medan, has been in Indonesia for a few years now and sees what growth the Indonesian military has achieved. The military has evolved, although there's still more progress that's needed, and I think that all of us who work here in Indonesia had come to realize that maybe the best thing for the evolution of the Indonesian military was more contact with the American military. So uh, the Secretary of State realized in November of 2005 that the time had come to lift the embargo, and so she did. And we were very happy that the first big joint event between the two militaries took place here in Sumatra, in my consular district, in November. That work took them to find this bridge and one other in dire need of repair. The bow is caused by years of it sitting here and the, with all the earthquakes, the compression of the two abutments coming together, the bridge finds its weakest point to start giving, which creates the bow in the side. The tension's all pushing out to the edge. Because of the compression of it and the bow in it, the strength of the bridge is greatly reduced. I mean, this at one time was probably a 20 to 30 ton bridge and now rated at six, rated at six tons. It's very important to the community because it's a single road that goes around the perimeter of the island. And without the bridge, people don't get their goods to town and they don't get any services to bring back. So they really, you know, they, their livelihood is farming, uh, bringing materials in and selling them and buying the goods that they need to survive. And without the bridge and without a road, they really can't do that very well. Lima. This schoolhouse is pretty much the standard for most of the outer villages here in Indonesia. Makeshift plywood uh, desks here. A board that is used with chalk. Not a chalkboard, just plywood that they use chalk on. Holes through the walls, all made out of, out of plywood and wood, all cracking and almost out. Doors that don't lock. Now the schools that the uh, U.S. military members here will be making, all concrete, lockable doors, toilets even, library, administration offices, all with a fence around it to protect the learning environment for the children here in Indonesia. Helping the kids is the best part of it. Um, every one of us has children on the team and we all enjoy helping out kids. To come here and have the opportunity to do something and see the kids' faces and know it's going to be better for them, it, it means a lot. To the children who use these brand new schools and the villagers who traverse these bridges, this is a gesture of kindness in the form of nothing more than bricks and mortar and a new growing relationship. Corporal Jeremy Vaught on the Indonesian island of Nias.